Are you looking for maybe the most portable power station on the market? The AC2A from Bluetti just might be the answer. Let's check it out. Welcome back to Solar Reviews Labs. Today, we've got another portable power station, and this might be our most portable one we've gone through yet. This is Blue Eddy's AC2A. It's really light. They say it weighs seven pounds, but it has to be lighter than that. Let's get it on a scale and find out. All right, let's put it on here. Wow, it's, it's not even registering a weight, so I guess maybe the scale has a minimum and this doesn't even hit it, but that just goes to tell you how portable it is. With 300 watt output and 204.8 watt hours, it can charge all your phones, tablets, switches, all your devices that you need. Keep them going for a day or two, which is really important, great for your car. It comes in at $249 MSRP, but they have a special launch price of $179. Bluetti puts their stuff on sale pretty often, but maybe not at this number. So if you do like the device, I would go and buy it. And if you want to, we have a link below that you can click. That means it breaks out to about 87 cents a watt hour. For comparison, the AC70, which is like step up from this guy, is 65 cents a watt hour. So it's just like shopping at Costco. The more you buy, the cheaper it is, but this is your entry level device. This is how you get your foot into the door in the portable power station. Let's talk about who this thing is actually for. We already talked about how light it is. It's just under eight pounds. They have it listed at 7.9, but I'm telling you, it feels lighter. I don't know why. We measured the other Blue Eddy, the AC70, and that measured in lighter than they listed for too. I don't know if they're going on a high end. Maybe they want it to seem heavier so it seems more sturdy, but these devices are plenty sturdy and they're not heavy at all. At this super lightweight, it's perfect for backpacking trips and long rides in the car. You can bring it along with you anywhere you go. It's basically the highest step up of a portable power bank which you're probably familiar with, people bringing their cars for their phones. Those usually cost between 70 to $120 for just an average one, and usually just has like a USB-A and USB-C input. This is just the next level up of that because it still is lightweight. You can't just slip it into your pocket, but this thing would actually fit pretty comfortably in a backpack. It'll keep your devices going for a full day, just like your phones and laptops, but a Bluetooth speaker, if you wanna go like fishing, or if you're just gonna go chill out, maybe go camping or something like that, or you could go bring it with a drone. This would charge your drone batteries all day. We use drones all the time for the video team here, and I will say those batteries die super fast, and having something very convenient like this that I don't have to lug in and out of the field would be like a game changer. One of the downsides though, is this thing has no IP rating, so you really can't get it wet. You gotta be really mindful of that because most other devices like this do. A lot of the portable power stations have varying degrees of IP ratings, but this has no IP rating, and that's just because it is the entry-level version. It's just the greatest version of a portable power bank that you can have, and with the added bonus that it has these AC outlets. All the things that make it portable does mean it's not the biggest storage solution for you. It only has 204.8 watt hours. That means this battery can only charge this 16-inch MacBook Pro maybe twice all the way full. But that said, you can add a 200 watt solar panel to recharge this outdoors. You can keep it going for days because it does charge really fast, which is gonna be nice considering that it doesn't hold that much power. But as long as your power needs are basically just like laptop, phone, speaker, really simple stuff, this thing is perfect and I highly suggest getting it. Although the downside is if you do wanna charge this thing with solar panels, that's gonna add about 16, 20 pounds to the load. And that kind of takes away the nicest part of this, which is its ultra portability. All right, so this thing comes with three different charging modes. Let's plug it in and test them all, see how loud they are now. At this point, I'm super familiar with Blue Eddy's app, and it's just really straightforward. It shows you how it's discharging, how it's charging, the certain wattages, what port's using what, which is all super familiar stuff. There's not really any bells or whistles on it, which is kind of nice, but as a design language person myself, it's something I would like to see. But in a device like this, you're really not gonna have that many bells and whistles, so the app missing them isn't like a big deal or anything like that. The app is super fast and responsive, which is nice, especially if you're far away from your station and you need to change it for some reason. And the best part is, I think it's the only way you can change the charging speed on this. I haven't found a way to do it through the device. I try not to read the manuals just so that way I'm not regurgitating the information they want me to know and I like to play around with them. I think you need the app to change the charging mode from turbo, normal, and silent. So that's probably your best bet is just downloading the app to do that. This thing isn't perfect though. Some of the things I would have liked to see from it that it just doesn't have is the ability to charge via USB-C. 
We keep referring to this as the best possible version of like a portable power pack with kind of things you just plug your phone into all day, keep it in your back pocket. Those have the convenience of being able to charge via USB-C, which is the same wire that you have probably for your phone and other devices. It's become pretty standard. Even Apple has it nowadays. So with this guy, you still need that big AC cable. Even if you're gonna charge it via solar or something like that, you just have to keep extra cables on you. It's a little bit inconvenient. They also took away the wireless charging on top, and I personally like it, and Bluetti's known to have it on a lot of their devices. We've tested a bunch of devices in the past, they all have it. Maybe the company has inside data that says people aren't really using them so much and they just wanted to keep the cost down, keep it super affordable, and that's kind of the trade off there. The AC2A does have power lifting mean, which means it can increase its capacity to 600 watts. It's at 300 right now, so getting to 600 doubles the available usability of this, but really it's gonna run that battery down in about 20 minutes. So it's something you can really only use in a pinch or something that you wouldn't wanna rely on too much. 300 watts, again, is going to get all your phones, laptops, and stuff like that charged. The 600 watt usage of it, while it's a cool feature, isn't something I would use this for, and kind of misses the mark because the AC70 is gonna have all that power. It's just one step up from this, and I think that they should have maybe prioritized keeping this for what it is, which is just a super portable power station. But here is something cool for the off-grid and solar enthusiasts that watch the channel. The AC2A uses an XT60 plug for solar charging. This is so preferable to the old DC barrel jacks that so many Blue Eddy generators have used for so long because it's more standard and it's easy to buy a replacement cord online. And if you're like me and lose your cords all the time, having something that's more readily available is just so much more convenient. Now, just because Blue Eddy sent us this device for testing and reviewing, doesn't mean it's a commercial, so my honest thoughts on it are, I'm a little confused as to why they made it, because there's already a device in Bluetti's own lineup that beats it in almost every way. The EB3A, which currently sells on Bluetti's website for about $200, is $30 more than this, and it has 600 watts naturally the whole time, not with that power lifting mode, and it holds 268 watt hours, which is almost 70 more watts than the AC2A. It offers more DC outputs, charges up to 430 watts with AC, plus solar. And also, the EB3A includes that wireless charging pad and that front light, which is just missing from this device. It has a similar UPS mode and app control, and it has the same five-year warranty. The only thing the EB3A that loses on is its size and weight. It is 10 pounds versus this eight pounds, and it's about an inch larger in all dimensions. So it feels like they just tried to make a portable power pack, but they already have something just like it on the market. I wish they almost went a little bit smaller, maybe cut one of these AC ports, but I just, I just don't see why I would take this over the EV3A unless weight is the most important factor to me. That's it, thanks for watching. It's a pretty light video, which is fitting considering it's a super light device. But like I said before, if this is the kind of device you want just to throw in your backpack or car for long trips, it's perfect. Anything else, you might wanna look for something else. And if you're looking for something else, we've done other videos that you can check out. You can look at them here.